Good morning, everyone. It's Brenda Quintana, and it's the day after Canadian Thanksgiving. So if any Canadians are out there, I hope you had uh, a happy Thanksgiving. I live in the, the US, I live in the Boston area, but uh, our son was visiting from Canada. So we uh, actually celebrated Canadian Thanksgiving this year, which normally we don't always celebrate Canadian Thanksgiving because it's not always, um, I guess it is a holiday here in Massachusetts, um, but it's not Thanksgiving, obviously. So sometimes we end up working. And um, so, but this year, since our son was coming down, especially we had uh, dinner and I tell you, like, even though I don't think I put that much on my plate, we had pumpkin pie afterwards and my stomach was stuffed. Oh my goodness. I don't think I normally eat that way at all. So, but we had a great time and um, our son is still here and he's um, on work term. So he's working remotely today. And so he's over in the other room. My husband is in the office next to me as always. And um, so we're all working from home today. Um, um, fortunately, sometimes he does a live with me, but because he's working this week, um, he has to get those hours in and he can't do um, a live with me while he's here. But maybe um, he's planning on coming up at Christmas, so maybe I can snag him then. Um, he won't be able to come for American Thanksgiving because he doesn't have time off. But anyway, uh, it's just been really great to have him here. And um, so I'm all distracted and my brain is not functioning 100% and I am so behind. Um, if you are one of my customers and you are waiting for your uh, host code gift from last month, um, they are going out this week. I've almost got the I have these cute thank you cards that I'm making um, and they are actually going to be Friday's project. Um, they I, I just think they're really fun. So um, I am in the process of making those and I will get those host code gifts in um, the mail. And if you're one of my team members, I hope you have a little grace with me. Those gifts, um, I have um, door prizes and team recognition and those are all going out this week as well. And I'm sorry, I'm so, so behind. I wanted to get them out last week, but my brain um when my son is here i just kind of it just turns into mush and i just want to spend time with him so anyway i see a few of you are on here so i will switch modes to uh casing tuesday and that's the day when we take a card out of one of the catalogs and we give it a little makeover and um so let me pull up the card that we are working on today here it is and so this to me isn't one of our typical Casing Tuesday cards. Um, it is, there isn't too many layers to it. So originally I was kind of like, yeah, can we do this as a sketch? This was obviously not my selection. So usually I pick cards that have more layers, but um, the person said, yeah, you know, I think this would make a good, you know, sketch for this reason. And so I thought we would give it a try and I hope you will give it a try. And, and if it's more of a challenge for you, like it was for me, um, you know, next week there'll be another challenge. So we will move right along. Um, for my card, I just basically thought that this was a card with a horizon. So, you know, it has a bottom layer that will anchor your images and you can do whatever you want in the background, be that designer paper, or if you want to, you can do a spectacular background like the one that they did. And I did kind of a background with blending brushes, but not quite maybe as detailed as that one. So let's take a look at the sketch, which is here. So basically you're just taking a bottom layer. And if you want to, you can make that like a, a freehand slope layer or um, use a die to create a horizon and then you can add a greeting. Um, so just adapt it and, and make it work for your particular images. All right. I am going to talk to all of you afterwards. So I'm going to switch over to my other camera and let's have a look here. Here's my card. You know, after I finished this card, I was like, uh, does it need something else? And it probably does, but 
I kind of like it anyway, so I kept it really simple and sweet. I, I just, I, I my brain kind of stopped working last night, so I was kind of like, I'm just going to leave it like this. I, you know, cute little animals, they just work just really well. Um, so if you have any suggestions for me for this card to bling it up, you can always let me know. We can um, jazz it up a little bit more. Um, but right now it's kind of sweet and simple. And it uses the Happy Holidays bundle. And I'll show you how I created this kind of um, uh, blended brush background. Okay, so here is the bundle that I'm using. It's called Happy Holidays. Happy Holly Days. Um, and it has this cute stamp set and this border punch. Um, you can use this border punch and you can um, punch it right along the edge of your card. Um, what I would do if I was doing that, I would um, like do, it, it creates um, a negative, um, uh, negative images. So like kind of holes in your paper and then you could put a strip of green behind there and then pop um, little the little red um, berries in or use some gemstones um, to act as berries. So um, kind of a fun punch. And so just remember when you buy these two together, you'll save 10% versus buying them separately. Okay, let's start with um, creating um, the background and the foreground. So what I did, basically, I just freehanded a line across some um, paper. So um, just take a pencil, where's my pencil? And I just like drew a line across uh, a piece of basic white. The basic white piece for my card is five and a quarter inches. And this is about two and a half inches. And I kind of did the line about halfway through and you want to start off um, with that because um, sorry I'm going to mute my phone so it doesn't bing all right so I'm just going to cut along my pencil line it's you can sometimes just freehand cut if you're good at this kind of thing but I just wanted kind of a pencil line as a guide and this is just going to be my snowy horizon. Okay. And then if I want to do more of the same card, I just wrote template on the top of this piece. So now I can just take, you know, a two and a half by five and a quarter inch piece and use this again. So that way I don't have to recreate the wheel every single time. And you can kind of see my pencil line on here. Take a, a nice white eraser or your favorite eraser that does a good job and just get rid of that pencil line. So now I've got my horizon. And then I'm going to take a piece of five and a quarter by four inch cardstock. And I am just going to draw a light line on here because I want to know, you can kind of just see it on there. I don't want to make it super intense, but it's just going to be a guide for where I'm going to sponge, sponge, blend brush colors. Also, this is my little um, bird stamp. So I'm just going to take this, this bird's going to be right about here. So I'm going to make a little pencil mark right where the little um, bird feet are going to be. I want to create a more intense yellow area right where the bird is. Okay, so I'm going to take my Bumblebee ink pad and I'm going to take my blending brushes. I have not used these a lot, so this month I'm kind of focusing on using them a bit more. Um, and I'm just going to daub into my, um, my ink pad. It's kind of off camera here, okay? Um, the first thing I want to do is I want to kind of get rid of that intensity. So I'm kind of getting rid of that initial blob of color. And I'm always going to start very light. I'm going to start right where I have that mark. And I'm just going to just start rolling some color on here right around where the bird would be. And because I'm going to be stamping on here, I use basic white. So I'm not going to go down here um, 
where the the snow is going to be because there's no point because it's going to be covered up that's why I wanted to give myself you know room so yeah I'm just kind of just always start light don't um, you know press down too hard because otherwise you're gonna see the shape of the brush okay okay cuz so you can kind of see I've created a big yellow area I'm going to close that up we could touch up in a second we'll bring in balmy blue next and these brushes you can wash them out afterwards so I'm um, going to ahead and just you know using them and then later on I can wash them out and use them with different colors so I'm gonna start blending around the um, the edges now kind of creating a sky with you know maybe I think this is supposed to be kind of like a sunset, I don't know, a snowy sunset scape. And I'm just avoiding this area down here um, because I don't need to actually hit that snowy scape. And, you know you can play around with these I um, the nice thing with blending brushes is I think you know the backgrounds no matter how you you do it you end up with an interesting background so you might not have ended up with the background that you wanted but you might be able to use it for something else and I think what I like about this is you know I'm using um, Balmy blue is my background, and it's neat how that um, it kind of just fades into the the blue of the um, of the um, cardstock afterwards. So now I'm going to come in a little bit and blend um, this a little bit into the yellow, so that we've got a little bit of um, color contrast there. And I noticed down here. Right here, I barely have any color right down here at my snowy edge. Okay. All right. I think that looks pretty good um, for our image. So now you have a choice. Maybe you've chosen a stamp set that has a die cut with it. And in that case, you know, maybe you want to go ahead and stamp your image and then um, cut it out. So I, w I was a little lazy, I have to admit. I wanted to see if I could stamp my image right on here and color it on here. And so that's actually what I did. So um, I'll show you that. And I actually did cut out a bird as well. And we can see what you like better afterwards. So I'm just going to go ahead. This is the little bird image from Happy Holidays and I'm just inking it up with Memento. I've got still my little pencil mark right here. So I'm just gonna kind of aim this right onto that pencil mark. Ooh, I smudged it a little bit. Well, that's okay. I, um, I think last time I let everything dry a little bit more so see that I pressed down and I got a lot of black. So he's very, very dark. That's okay. I am going to go ahead and grab my Daffodil Delight Dark. Oh, and when I color things, I always either go online or I grab, like if it's a bird, I grab a bird book. And I was trying to figure out what kind of bird this little guy is just by his like shape. And I don't know if it's a goldfinch, but that's kind of what I decided that, um, you know, one of these, you could kind of see how there's kind of um, 
a delineation between the dark and the light and there's a little yellow on the chest so I use these images and I use them to kind of help decide how I was going to color this little guy so I'm going to take my bullet on my daffodil I'm going to go ahead and just color just part of the breast area with the daffodil delight dark I'm going to come in with my um, crumb cake light and just color in right here. This is going to kind of be yellowish anyway. It's going to blend yellow because this is such a light, light color. And then I'm going to come in with my crumb cake dark and do the top half of the bird. And if you want to do a little shading with an even darker color, I suggest a soft suede light would make a nice complementary color if you wanted to just deepen the crumb cake dark. I think my crumb cake blends are almost at the end of their life cycle. One side is more juicy than the other though, so I'm gonna just kind of come in and finish this guy off. Okay, and then we'll come in with pumpkin pie light and just do the feet. The pumpkin pie light is like a, it's not as intense as regular pumpkin pie, so it just blends nicely for the, for the little bird. All right, so basically I just colored that bird right on there. Um, one little thing um, that since I was working really quickly and the the paper it was a little inky um, next time what I would do is wait a minute or two but before I stamped my memento on top of here because it um, uh, it feathered a little bit because of the wetness of the ink but you know what it doesn't look bad at all so I'm not too upset about it I'll, I'll compare the two um, images afterwards so you can see what each would look like okay where did my Here's my little piece, and that will get um, added onto here. Before I do that though, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp Noel on here to make sure I can get it straight. I thought Noel, for my particular uh, card, fit really nicely in this snowbank right here. But the nice thing about this stamp set is you've got a lot of options for greetings. You've got Happy Christmas, Christmas Blessings. So if your um, snowbank was a little shorter or whatever, you could choose a different greeting that would fit. I kind of liked Noelle because it kind of fit in my space really nicely. Okay, so then what I'm going to do... My Tombow is sticking to the bottom of my jar. I'm just going to adhere this onto here. And then I'll bring in my Holly, what is it called? Let me see. Get this name right. It is called the punch that's part of the bundle is called the holly border punch so then I'm going to take a piece of this um, it's green foil sheet it comes with red and green colored foil sheet and I'll just stick this in I think I'll punch the other end just come in here and just grab some more leaves and I'm not going to use the little red dots from there because I'm going to add some red rhinestones. So it's a little easier to work with. So I'm just going to pin 
the holly underneath the bird just to anchor it a little bit. And so this is kind of what my piece will look like. So now I just need to pick these guys up. Oh. <laughs> oh. They're being thrown around this morning. Okay. So just pick it up, place it down. And I'll grab the other leaf. I'll do the two outer leaves. Chose the two bigger leaves, outer leaves first. And then this little tiny one will go in the middle. I spaced them apart a little bit because I'm going to come in and anchor them with some red rhinestones and we'll just pick some up off the sheet here. I'll put one here, one here, and one here. There we go. And I guess we should stick it on a card base, huh? <laughs> Since that's the whole idea of this exercise is making a card. Okay, so this is balmy blue and it measures eight and a half by five and a half and I scored it earlier at four and a quarter and I folded it in half. And then we're just gonna add this on here. And I'll just center it on here. So if you had a die cut shape, you could do, instead of, you could just create your background, then die cut your shape, whatever it is. You know, the original card had the Santa. And um, I die cut, I cut um, a bird earlier and I die cut it. So if you wanted to, you could do that instead. You know, if you had, um, or if you wanted to, you know, fussy cut out the bird, you could do that as well instead. If you wanted to, you could pop up that little bird on some dimensionals to give it a little bit more prominence on the card. Um, so that's another option. But this one's kind of the quick and easy option. And, you know, um, other than the fact that the Sahara, not Sahara sand, the crumb cake color remained a little um, less uh, yellow, there's not a whole lot of difference between the coloring of those two. So you can, you know, make a quick card like that um, without having to die cut anything. So here's what I mean about my card smudging a little bit because it was a little wet from the ink. So you can see um, this one right here, um, right at the top had a little bit of smudging and this one has a little bit uh, more of a clear stamped image. So I just wait just a little bit before you stamp, um, stamp after blending so you don't get that. So um, I, I remember I waited. I, I actually, um, at that point, I kind of stopped and I, um, I colored this little bird off on the, the side to see if I could get the coloring right before I stamped it on there. So it had time to dry before um, I stamped the image. And I forgot about that uh, time and I didn't even think about the fact that it might smudge. So that's just a little, little tip. And then, you know, if you want to, if you have an image that you want to, uh, die cut then you can always do that so there is my card and I you know one thing I really like about this color combination is it probably will work for every type of image because you're just basically creating a nice night nice yellow spot where the sunshine or the winter sun is kind of blurred a little bit 
and then the blue sky in the background it would work for almost anything it would work for a floral it would work for a Santa Claus you know it just kind of really spotlights um, that image so definitely a nice color the bumblebee ink um, with the balmy blue would work really nicely with whatever you want to do okay I'm coming back to you guys and if you have any suggestions on how I could jazz up that card I'd love to hear it um, I think it looks pretty as is I just last night I you know I tried putting ribbon around the top I just didn't like it sometimes sometimes keeping on adding things to the card doesn't really help <laughs> the card it just kind of makes it have more and more focal points and then it just doesn't look right at all so sometimes when I, that happens I just kind of stop and say okay you know it's a nice card um, maybe it's not the best brightest card you've ever created but um, uh, sometimes adding to it doesn't really help at all so you just have to kind of be content with a, a simpler card that you've created okay good morning everyone good morning D and Betty and good morning Amy Ooh, you are cold this morning uh, I love how Amy has put both the Fahrenheit and the Celsius um, out there because I still do Celsius and I know that we have some um, people from Europe and from other places um, uh, down down under that come here and they we all do the Celsius thing and then the US does uh, Fahrenheit so it's 26 Fahrenheit or minus 3 Celsius and that is kind of cold um, good morning Bev. good morning Ellie love to see some team members on here this morning oh Betty you're only 28 degrees you're just a little bit south of um, of Amy in Washington State good morning Teresa good morning Janine D says, very sweet card. I love the background. This will be a good chance to practice with blending brushes. Yes, you know, and you can't really go wrong. I'm not much of a technique girl, and I managed to pull off a fairly decent background, so I'm pretty happy with that. Thank you, Amy. Amy also said it was a sweet card, and Janine said it was a pretty card. Aww. And Cindy said it's a beautiful card. Aw, well, thank you so much for your kind words about my card i hope if you haven't tried blending brushes you will give them a try um, they they are kind of fun to work with you can uh, get um they come in a set of three and you can wash them out and use them with different colors they the bristles where are my brushes i have stuck them somewhere ah here they they're just tiny um it's not a sponge they're actually little um bristles it's kind of interesting um, they really are little tiny brushes so um, it's a little different than uh, a sponge dauber where it is like a sponge um, so it's just different kind of different kinds of things you can do with them so anyway next Friday or this Friday I will have a, um, a, a card I don't even know what I will call this card but just suffice it to say you will want to pop um, pop in on Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern when I will be on YouTube I will be demonstrating that card this week it's a fun card um, if you are not part of our Facebook group already for Casing Tuesday um, I have left the link down below in the description for you so you can join if you would like to um, this allows us to share our cards so if you want to you can join in and share the cards you made today um, based on the sketch or you can just look at everyone else's cards and you can look you can comment and you can kind of get the idea of what we're trying to do and I, I really love this challenge each week it really helps me um, keep moving forward and trying new things um, then um, if you're looking for any of the supplies I talked about today um, I left all the links down in the description of the video for the supplies but you can also uh, click over to my blog post and that will have some still images of the cards that I did today 
Um, so if you want to purchase anything, just remember, I always reward um, people who purchase from me. If you spend $15 with me, you'll get one of my free tutorials. And if you spend $50 in October 2021, you will be getting the Garden Gems um, in November. And these are a limited time jewel option. I don't have a photo yet um, because I can't grab that catalog um, or the publication photo, but as soon as I get my garden gems, um, I will take a photo and add them to my blog so you can see them, but they are very pretty. Um, I have seen a photo of them. They're just a little delayed in transit. All right, guys, I hope you have a great week and I hope to see you on Friday. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.